today on Divorce Court. I think Keisha sees me a bit of a sugar daddy because I work long hours and I always try to provide for her and her family. I want him to be able to pay attention to what I have to say and take value in it. When she gets angry, she's a hothead, she slams doors and she yells. When Dale records our fights, it's irritating to say the least. Well, if Keisha doesn't change, I'm not gonna be able to stick around because I just can't handle her temper. If he doesn't change, I'm out the door today. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Keisha Ray and Dale Lamb. Ms. Ray and Mr. Lamb, you have been together for one year and you have no children together. Mr. Lamb, you have been here before with your previous wife, uh, but you're here again. Let's figure that out. <laughs> How all this happened. New, new woman, new circumstance. So, Ms. Ray, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, your relationship with Mr. Lamb and why you're here today? Um, we met through a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. um, everything was good. Uh, except for when I first met him, he lied to me the day I met him. He... <laughs> what, did he what did he lie about? He lied about his age. He told me he was 42. I guess he thought that the large age gap would be a problem, but he was actually 47. That's and incorrect, Your Honor. I told her I was 44. You told okay. me you're 42. But, well, you told her an untruth about I did. Age. Okay, I got you. You told her untruth about your age. Go ahead, Ms. Ray. Everything was good. We actually, since the day we met, we hung out every day mm -hmm. for three months straight. Uh -huh. And then he cheated. And tell me the circumstances of the cheat and how you found out. Uh, the it. only way. The... We had a conversation and I told him that I'm not the type of person to go through another person's phone. Mm -hmm. um, but all the familiar signs started to come up when he was very secretive. When he went to the bathroom, he took his phone. When he sat on the couch but he wanted to get something to drink, he took his phone. When he went to sleep, it he was his under phone. his pillow, he took his phone. When he came over one day, um, he left. I went to call him to tell him he forgot the food that I got for him. The phone rang in my house. I knew I had about five minutes before he had to come back because I lived on a one-way street, so he had to go all the way around. I went through his phone. My gut feeling said something was happening and there were messages. You're pretty, I miss you, I can't wait to see you again, and... This was three months into the relationship, three approximately? Your Honor, we were not exclusive at that time. You're at my house every single day. <laughs> How are now, we not exclusive? Now, Ms. Ray, I'm going to have to land with Mr. Lamb on this one. <laughs> Women make an assumption after a certain period of time, if we're with you, that you've decided that we're exclusive. Just because you're hanging out every day for 90 days doesn't mean there is a decision that you're exclusive. Then why are you at my house? Yeah, no, but he slept because you let him sleep with you without any declaration. We hadn't slept together yeah, yet. Yeah, what, whatever, but there was no declaration. We mm. are a couple and we are exclusive. You said you hadn't slept together yet? Nope. Then you weren't exclusive. <laughs> Thank you, know you Your Honor. Saying? You made that assumption. You never sat down and have a conversation. What are we doing here? Where are we going? What's happening? I want to be with we you. We had you a conversation. Alone. He asked me if I wanted more kids. He, had, I mean, we had the conversation. No, that's not the conversation. That's a conversation. We interject what we want to hear in okay. that conversation, and y'all know it too. The it's not just us. You dance all around it, but you don't actually say it, and then you rest on the fact that you didn't actually say it, but you know that everything you did and everything you d said would lead us to believe. The common denominator, you're right, the common de denominator that she's refusing to bring out is that we had a mutual agreement that we weren't gonna go through each other's phones. She would never mm. have found out about the girl that I was seeing if she hadn't gone through my phone in the mm. first place. That is not true, that is not true. You tell me what's true. Because I actually got an app with a second phone number and contacted him myself. Within 24 hours, he decided to tell me that I looked good because I sent him a fake picture Photo, right. of this girl. I looked good, contacted, wanted to meet up, went to the place to meet up with me, didn't know I was there, took pictures. So 
That's not true. That just shows how devious she is. Yeah. Why would she have to use a, a separate app, use a separate phone number, and send me a picture of somebody else pretending to be her? Because she wanted to catch you. And she oh. did. But we weren't exclusive. Thank you. So it didn't matter what she called me doing. We weren't exclusive. And I understand that, Mr. Lamb, and, and you didn't, you, you did assume exclusivity that wasn't there, but you led her to believe that. Do you know I don't I mean? believe you, I did, Jordan. Yeah, oh, sure you did. You, it, 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 sure you did. So what happened after you caught him? Because to me, if you hadn't slept with him yet and you caught him on a cheat or what you thought was a cheat, that's a bounceable moment. He left. He, he, we got an argument. He left for three weeks. I thought it was done and over with until he came back before my birthday and knocked on my door. Mm -hmm. And he showed up and I'm like, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. I wanted to apologize. I couldn't take it anymore that I cheated on you. This is after the blah, 15 voice blah, messages that she blah. left me crying and begging me to come back. That was not true. Okay. Did you ask him to come back? No, I asked him to talk to me. He blocked me. He blocked my phone number, Why blocked did me you on social talk media. To him? Because I don't like leaving things undone. So it, you can't just do something to me and leave. No, I want to know why you did it and what your excuse was. <laughs> But he didn't talk to me for three weeks. So I was like, okay, I'm done. Three weeks, we're good. You came to my house, I didn't come to yours. How long did it take him to talk his way in the house? 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 seconds, Your Honor. 20 minutes. I think it's just like that movie. He had you at hello. The fact that, that, that you were out, that he was yep. out there, you were letting him back I in. I did go back to her apartment and when I knocked on the door and she opened it, Everything was a surprise. That is not yeah, a surprise. She Why was are you surprised at my house to see me. She weeks. talked to me, invited me in, and <sighs> here we are. Mm -hmm. And you were glad he was back too. Now you come on in here looking large and in charge, but <laughs> I, that's what you did. It didn't go exactly like, like that. that. But yes, he's back, obviously. After that, were there any other instances where you found him cheating or inappropriately using social media? About a month ago, he was on social media, commenting on somebody's breast and asking for submissive women, saying he was single. Asking he, for submissive women? He wants a submissive woman. He told somebody he wanted a submissive woman and told the girl he wanted to get to know her and asked her how big her boobs were. <laughs> Mr. Lamb, is that, is that, that was, accurate? That is true. However, that was just meaningless flirtation. Some girl actually commented on me on Facebook commented about my looks or whatever, so I responded it that was way. one-sided. However, what she's talking about, I have a classmate that I haven't seen in years, and she may be misconstruing these two people, but this girl just had emergency breast cancer surgery because she had cancer years ago, and she had to go back yeah. to the hospital. So I did comment on this one girl, how good she looked, and I did say something about her breasts in the comment because I knew her from school. She lives in another state. Well, it wasn't sexual, was no, it? That no, that one was not, not sexual, correct. but she's confusing the those Facebook two. The Facebook message says they were just becoming friends at the top, uh -huh. and at the bottom, it was just his conversation. I'd like to get to know you. How big are your boobs? If you've known this woman, why are you telling her you want to get to know women. her? The woman I she's talking you. about is someone different. I got you. Yeah. So we, I've got the I got the lay of the land with respect to social media. Now I also understand there is an issue with the finances, so I want to talk about that. I took out the money because I didn't want to argue with him. Counted four hundred dollars. We're in a van with no AC. All the windows are down. Driving through Arizona, hundred dollars flies out the window, and I said, well. We're down to $300. <laughs>So, Mr. Lamb, I, uh, we want to talk about financial issues, and as I noted at the top, you had been here before mm -hmm. with a previous relationship, and you had financial issues with her, too. Yes, so I'm going to roll what we did the last time to see if the problem is any different this time. <laughs> this past January, actually right before New Year's, I went to the bank, it was a weekend, uh -huh. didn't have any cash, I went to the bank to get a few hundred bucks out so she and I could go do something for the weekend. Right. And when I went to the bank, I found out that we were not only flat broke, all the accounts that I had were empty. stored, yeah, savings account, the house fund, yeah. it's demolished. I remember that. Yes. You had more hair and... <laughs> But you had more belly. I did. So, 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 okay, you know, but you know, less there, less there, it's hey. all right. Why don't you tell me what your financial issues are with Ms. Ray? 
basically she likes to shop and she always wants money to go out and do things like that, shopping, and I'm not a shopper. I am a frugal guy, I, or some people might say cheap, okay? Right. <laughs> Very I, cheap. I don't spend money f just, you know, crazy like. I like to keep it in control, and I she unfortunately doesn't like that. Well, first of all, are you living together? Sometimes. I have my own not place, really. but we do stay yeah. together sometimes. But sometimes, but yeah. you're not living together. No. no. Yeah. Tell me about <laughs> the $400 test he put you through, because I thought that was deep. Okay, so we went on a family trip, and he asked me to hold $400. Now, if I spend money the way he says, why are you asking me to hold your money? Mm -hmm. Second, I held the $400, we went on the trip, we had fun, we didn't spend any money out of my pocket or out of my purse. Everything we spent came from him. When we got in the car, we are on our way back home, he asked, how much money do we have left? I thought that was odd, since mm -hmm. we didn't spend any of my right. money. Or of I the money you were any, holding, yeah. Right. So I took out the money, because I didn't want to argue with him, counted $400. We're in a van with no AC. All the windows are down, driving through Arizona. $100 flies out the window. And I said, well, we're down to $300. He thought I was kidding. Don't joke, don't joke about my money. Don't joke, I'm not kidding. It flew out the window. Don't play with me, put it away, put it away, until we got home. When we got back to my house, he asked for his money, and I handed him $300. Where's the other 100? I told you, it flew out the window. <laughs> you thought I was kidding. I wasn't kidding. Mr. What did Lamb, I do? did no you way. ask her to hold $400, and, and if so, why did you? Your Honor, it was a test. I didn't wake up that day thinking I was gonna give her some money to hold for me. I had some shorts on that didn't have pockets. Right. They're really comfortable shorts. Uh -huh. She was sitting two feet away from me in the minivan. So I gave her, it was actually $600. So I gave her the money to hold because she has a little zip pocket in her purse where she can stuff the money. No big deal. The day goes on, great. We have a terrific time. On the way home, we were in Northern Arizona, not Phoenix, and it wasn't even summertime. The window was only cracked maybe this much, okay? Oh my okay? God, no it wasn't. Okay, <laughs> anyway, if $100 flew out of her purse and out the window, I'm two feet away from her, I would have heard it, I would have seen it, I would have slammed on those brakes and we would have pulled over and looked for that 100 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say a damn thing until we got home and that I asked for the true. money. Well, what do you think happened to the money? Because you were together all day long. Exactly. You didn't see any packages with clothes, nope. boots in it. What, what, what? what how did she spend it without you knowing she about it? She didn't spend it. She put it somewhere else in her purse, away from the rest of the money, and then when to I asked it. for it, it was gone. How exactly. No, that's not true. And then to true. finish the story, later that night, I was pretty much done with it. I was heated. It was an argument. No. But I went ahead and went to bed because she lives closer to where I worked at the time. So I was in bed about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. She comes in the bedroom and throws 100 bucks at me. A uh, miraculous recovery of $100. No, no, and he's lying. Because what happened when he got mad and started storming around my house, throwing around my things in my house, I called my friend who owed me money, asked her to bring me the money she owes me, and I gave it to him from her. Just to keep him quiet. So he could shut up. I should have kicked him out of my house. But there's no way that $100 just flies out the freaking window. That doesn't happen. It doesn't sprout wings. He took the video game, the TV, locked it in his car. We do this tit for tat. So I said, you know what? Electricity's off. You don't get to use, don't charge your phone. Don't use my microwave. Don't eat my food. If you want to play This Is Mine, don't do it. Would you stay with a partner who lied about their age? Tell us what you think at facebook.com slash divorce court. Divorce Court will be right back. You guys have only been together a year, so I think it's deep that the, you guys even know what the other one has financially. I just, you know what I mean? I was married five years before I could tell my husband. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just it's, to me, a, a, a year is, is nothing. You fight all the time, is that right? That's correct. Tell me what you fight about. Petty things, anything that it's just petty. We could fight about, we fought over a video game. My kids like to play video games. He has video games at my house. They're not allowed to play when he's not there. So when he gets there, they ask. He still tells them no. And I'm like, 
You can't tell a child they can't play when you're here and when you're not here. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. If that's the case, get it out of my house. So you guys got into a bad argument about that? Oh, he took the video game, the TV, locked it in his car. We do this tit for tat. So I said, you know what? Electricity's off. You don't get to use, don't charge your phone. Don't use my microwave. Don't eat my food. If you want to play This Is Mine, don't do it. Mr. Lamb, your version of that your event. Honor. Didn't the police end up getting called? Not that on was, this one. That, not on that one. Before that, the police got called and I called them because I asked him to take me. I, one of my children was in the hospital. I asked him to take me. He didn't want to take me until his movie was over. Pause the movie. My child is in the hospital. So I left, I came back, I said, why am I leaving? This is my house. You get out of my house. He didn't want to leave. He took forever to take his stuff, and I locked him out when he went outside. He kicked my door in. So I called the police. Mr. Lamb, did all that occur? I had just gotten home from work, and yeah, I have a PS4 at their place, okay? whoop de doo no big deal. I don't mind that they play it. I had just gotten in from working 15 hours. I sat down on the couch, Five minutes I'd been home, or I say home, but her place. I turn on the news. All of a sudden, her eight-year-old daughter wants to play. I'm like, well, look, you know, I want to watch the news. I want to settle in, you know, get in comfortable and just relax. All of a sudden, the eight-year-old runs to mommy. Mommy, Dale You're won't let me house. play. Okay. She lives there. You don't. Is it my PS4 or is it not? Then take anyway, it out of my house. And I did. But the point is, I don't mind them playing the games. We have video game time all the time. This particular day, I, I wanted just to didn't watch feel the like it. Now, I have some things I want to say. You all like them, but I don't care. How long should you date someone before he or she meets your kids? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. This situation makes me crazy. And let me tell you why. You've been dating for a year. He's staying over there with your kids in the house. He's got the, they got the PlayStation. You're fighting about that. You're fighting about money. Like you're a married couple. Don't, pre don't play house. You know what I mean? And you can't get married because he's already married, Correct. right? To the woman we saw on the videotape, yep. she right? She won't divorce me for some he, reason. He shouldn't be in your house. He shouldn't be staying there. You know what I mean? I understand, you know, if divorce proceedings were, were started and stuff and you're dating and whatever, but don't move him in and this just hope he'll start divorce proceedings. You have to have boundaries. Y'all shouldn't be fighting about money because your money is your money, her money is her money. Y'all shouldn't be putting each other out when you have an argument. You're teaching your kids not to have a resolution to arguments. You're teaching your kids, well, I get mad, well, I'm going to put them out, I'm going to put all my little stuff, you know, with every temper tantrum you have, with every episode that you hurl, you teach your children how to feel, and you're teaching your children that every argument is worthy of a, of a grand departure and a police arrival. Let's not do that. Your Honor, can no, I say no, something? No, 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 no. Are you getting a divorce? Yes. For real? When? I have done all you that I can do. You were here a couple of years ago with that. Five. And I've done all that I can do. Her and I actually stayed together for another two years after that video. But I have just contacted her last week. I've given her everything she needs to file the paperwork. It's basically in her court, and she's in Arizona. Ain't no such thing. If you want a divorce, you bop on down to court Thank and you, you file. Okay. She is required to respond in a certain amount of time and then you go from there. You don't have to have agreement. All you have to have is conviction. <laughs> and the filing fee. That's it and that's all. You put him out and don't let him back until he's filed that paperwork. This matter is adjourned. I said I wanted to be married before I was 35, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. I'm just going to have to deal with myself and my kids, and if it happens, it happens. Yeah, my divorce is not the only thing holding me back from being with Keisha. We have some financial issues, and there's some other little dynamics that we need to work out that a few came out here today.